gonna be finally, finally testing out the official stamp cut crease. If you wanna know how I feel about this, then just keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so the official stamp cut crease was invented, created by this woman in Brazil, I think, named Jack, Jack Nogueira. I, c I cannot roll my R's, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But I followed her account back in February, right when they sold out of the stamp cut crease. So I've been waiting for at least for like half a year now for this to come back in stock. So around the time it sold out, they were like, oh, don't worry, I'll come back in April. April rolled around, oh guys, we're working on our US site, it's gonna take a lot longer. And then they're like, okay, it's coming up in June. The next, finally, they're like, okay, for real, in August, we're gonna be launching our product. And I was so excited when they finally did because like I said, I've been waiting for this for six months. And around that time, like March, April, that's when I started seeing a lot of YouTubers doing stamp cut crease tutorials and I was like okay that's weird because she's been sold out for a few months and then I realized that there are copies or dupes and I didn't want to buy a copy or dupe because she's a small business owner she created this and I feel like it's really unfair because if I created something this cool and unique and someone started stealing my ideas and making money off of it I would be pretty pissed so I didn't want to support the people or the brands who took her idea and made money off of it or copied it. I wanted to support the woman who actually created it. I'm not a fan of big brands or even smaller brands stealing ideas from smaller indie brands. So I was not going to have it. I avoided watching any of the Stamp Cook Crease videos because I noticed that a lot of the makeup YouTubers reviewing them had normal lids and I have hooded eyes so it could have probably worked amazing on them and horrible on me. I did click on some of their videos with the stamp cut crease because I was like okay where did they get that this is sold out but then that's when I realized that they were fake. But I think the fake ones only come with one size this comes with three and it's only $20. So if you're gonna buy the stamp cut crease make sure you buy it from the woman who created it and she has her website on Instagram. So I didn't want to do first impressions because first impressions aren't really that reliable. You could hate something on your first impressions and then ending up later on the more you use it or the more you work with it. So I didn't want to do a first impressions on this because if I did, I would have been like, ah, oh, this doesn't really work really good. So I'm glad I didn't do a first impressions and I'm glad I tested this out a couple ways before I did this video. So I wouldn't recommend using this with anything other than a concealer or a liquid lipstick. The stamp is actually rubber, so when I tried to put more liquid consistencies like a pigment or even a more liquid thinner concealer, didn't really pick up the product well. So make sure you use a concealer or it would be really good to use like one of those paint pots and just brush it on to the stamp. I tried this out with liquid lipstick and it worked perfectly well. Sometimes I don't do cut crease with the concealer and then adding pigment on top. With liquid lipsticks, you don't need a concealer. They're wet and pigmented enough that when you stamp it on, you'll have a perfect cut crease. So again, just those two things, a concealer and a liquid lipstick. So another thing that I thought would work perfectly well but was a complete backfire was using it with Smolder Cosmetics pigments. With Smolder Cosmetics, you have a pigment and then you have a potion and it creates some kind of cool wet eyeshadow. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. I don't have to cut my crease or use concealer. I can just paint this on on the stamp and bam, perfect cut crease. See how it's streaky? See, like nothing even transferred because it's stuck to the rubber. So I really wouldn't recommend using a pigment and some kind of liquid or mixing medium. That just doesn't work out. So the next thing I wouldn't recommend using this for is glitter. On their Instagram though, I noticed that they always use some kind of glitter or pigment and it looked really pretty. But realistically, I feel like that really wouldn't work. First, obviously it wouldn't work with bigger cuts of glitter because it would just fall off once you press it on. And I noticed when they're putting the glitter on the models, the models are laying back so that the glitter doesn't just fall everywhere. But then uh, when they stand up, wouldn't the glitter just fall? And then I also tried it with smaller pigments. I tried it with smaller glitter. I tried it with all sizes of glitter and pigments and I still wouldn't recommend that because I noticed that even if I did put a pigment on here, it would stick so much to the stamp that when I tried to stamp it on my eye, there would be no transfer because it's just stuck to the rubber on the stamp. I also tried this over concealer, over another eyeshadow, over a sticky eyeshadow, and all the results were the same. Like, 
barely anything transferred and it's all still stuck here and I feel like that's just a waste of product because you're gonna need the stamp you're gonna brush on the glitter on the stamp and then you're gonna stamp it on your eye and not a lot of glitter is gonna come off of it so if I was gonna use this in glitter I would definitely not put glitter on this all I need from this is the outline and once I have that outline I can just follow that outline and place the glitter compared to putting glitter on this and then pressing it onto your eye I don't know if that made sense my point is you don't need to use this for glitter because I feel like it would just fall off. The only way I see glitter working is if you put glitter glue first on your lids and then press it on. But even then, I feel like that wouldn't work because the glitter would just be stuck to the stamp. Okay, so that was basically my first impressions when I tried it out yesterday and let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so all I did was put a pink and purple in the crease and now on to the fun part. So this comes with three stamp sizes. I tried out the smallest size, but I feel like that's too small. Maybe if you have mono lids, that would look really pretty. After testing all the sizes out, I'm definitely just gonna stick to the larger size because that's the only size that really gives me the cut crease I'm looking for. So it comes in this little package. So this is the smallest size and then the medium and then the bigger. If I use the smallest one, it would just cover my lid. And that kind of defeats the point of doing a cut crease on my hooded eyes because you won't be able to see it. So I really need to use either this one or the bigger one. So I'm going to use this with Tarte's Shape Tape. And with the Shape Tape, it's so much easier to put on because the wand is really thick and it could just cover it up in like one or two swipes. Another technique I tried, which I found on their Instagram, is that they pulled their lid and then stamped it on. First, I don't like doing that because I feel like that gives you wrinkles. Even when I do eyeliner, I don't really pull my lids like that. But when I tried that out, my skin was stretched from my eye and I stamped it. And then when I released, the skin kind of shrunk, you know, cause it's a stretch and it shrunk back and it just wasn't a good shape. So what I noticed worked best for me with my hooded eyes, I like to press the bottom part and then push it in compared to just like this. So I go like this. You know, I just feel like that makes less mistakes. It just controls it easier for me. I'm still kind of nervous because I'm not an expert at this yet. I just tested it out yesterday. So you can put the concealer all the way on or half. Or even if you're doing like a halo eye, you can just put the concealer right in the middle. But I like having it all the way. Okay, again, so leaning back. Let's hope this goes well. I push down on my lashes. And then I kind of like wiggle it. Oh, I feel like that's already going to be bad. And see like that. I don't mind that's messy because I can just fill in that concealer. I just, all I care about is that shape. I just don't like that there's so much leftover that still sticks on here. So what I notice they also do on their Instagram is that when it's patchy like that, they just get the leftover from this and like push it on. Yeah, this concealer is already dried down, so I'm gonna fill it in with a brush. Okay, you know what I think I'm gonna do from now on? Instead of filling it completely with concealer, I'm just gonna fill in that top edge because all I truly want from this is the outline. And plus you can see how much is wasted. So let's just try my theory right at the edge. Okay, hurry before this dries. What? Okay, that is so uneven. That's so weird because when I tried it on this side yesterday, it did the same thing. Like, it was very high on this side, but not on this side. Yeah, look, that's a completely different shape than this. And I swear I put it on the same way. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. It's weird because I assume since this was one shape, it would look perfectly with both my eyes, but okay, you know what? I'm gonna wipe off the makeup on this eye and try it again. Okay, so just screw the eyeshadow for now. I just wanna see if I can make this symmetrical as this eye. To get it the same shape as this eye, it looks like I need to bring it more towards my inner corner and lower. So this is attempt number two. Okay, more towards my inner corner. Okay, and lower. So instead of straight on, I went a little bit lower. Okay, that's kind of better. Okay, let's just keep it at that. Okay, 
We're just gonna draw the purple back on since we obviously lost that in the process. And even when I try really hard to paint on concealer the same way or make it symmetrical, it just never works. I think it's because like my eyebrow is higher on this side and this is lower. So like I have more space right here compared to here. So I, I don't know. I love this color. It's so pretty. I love using it as an inner corner highlight, but it just looks so pretty by itself. It's like purple and white. So I'm just going to redraw that purple back on and then blend it out. Okay, so for glitter, I'm going to be using this purple glitter I got from Etsy. But it's basically like those glitter gels. I don't know, I love squishy stuff. So this will be my first time using a glitter gel, so hopefully it goes well. I'm just going to use a Sigma smudge brush. It's really tiny and synthetic, so hopefully the gel sticks to it. That glitter is so pretty. This would be really pretty for festivals. I actually don't think this is for the eyes. It's more for like when you go to a festival and you put all that glitter on the side of your face or in your hair. But I mean, I always like putting glitter on my eyes. Okay, I think I'm gonna just let that dry down. I'm gonna put on some eyeliner and mascara and lashes. And I think that's it and I'll be back. Okay, so for lashes, I used EXO Beauty's Glamorista. I thought that would be perfect for this look. It's called Glamorista. Um, after wearing this glitter for a bit, I do not recommend that you put it near your eyes because I kind of felt it stinging my eyes, even though like I don't know what it could be because it doesn't feel like there's alcohol in this glitter. But try not to put it near your eyes. So for lips, I'm going to go with Anastasia's Liquid Lipstick in Clover. It's such a cool like lavender gray color. Okay, so final thoughts now that we're done using it. With my first impressions, I didn't really like it. It was pretty hard to work with, but now with my second impressions, it's getting better. I really think it's just because you need to practice with it. Of course, it's gonna be hard using this on your first go around, but obviously it gets easier and easier the more you use it. So I definitely like it more than I did yesterday because I've learned a few things. As you saw in the video, there was kind of a fail where it did not match and is not working out how I wanted it to. I assumed that this would solve my problem with my cut creases because like I've said a million times my eyes are different shapes but this didn't really solve that if I play around with it and get used to how it fits differently on each eye then eventually I could really perfect that but as of today and my second time using this I think it kind of went well I it's still kind of uneven but I think with the mascara and the lashes and everything on, it looks it looks really good. I do love this. I do think I just need to practice more. Practice makes perfect. And you will see me using this in my videos because I hate it when I watch videos and they're like, oh my gosh, I love this product. And then you never see them using it again. But you will actually see me using this product because I want to keep using this till I really got it down. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say. If you guys try this out, let me know if you like it or if it worked well with your eyes because you probably have symmetrical eyes. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.